us. My first guest is co-founder and operations director at LFR International, Zachary um, Eisner. Good to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to be here. Yes, it is. My second guest is the outreach director at LFR International, Ashwin Kulkani. Welcome to Hard Facts. Thank you. It's been so great being in Nigeria and so um, so excited to be a part of the show today. And my third guest is executive director of Health Emergency Initiative Nigeria, HEI, Pascal Achunini, welcome to Hot Facts. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Pascal has been here before yes. to talk about the work that he do at um, his NGO as well. And Lagos, this is the kind of conversation that um, requires you to ask a lot of questions. So feel free to call in, ask your questions about first aid, Ask your questions about uh, this first responder thing. What is it? Uh, ask your questions about first responder training. Have you ever witnessed a situation where CPR or first aid or some other first response made the difference between life and death? Tell us that story as well. 0700-993-993-993. We've got Facebook. We're streaming there so you can watch our guests live. I recommend that you do because they're going to be doing uh, d demonstrations you know, while the conversation is going on. So so watch live Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3. Watch live as well on YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. Let's start with LFR International. Um, how long have you guys been around? So LFR International has been an organization uh, since 2018. We've actually been doing this work, though, since even before the organization's founding in 2016. Uh, so it's been wonderful to be learning from people all over the world as we develop these first responder training courses and building on those courses. And it's been super incredible to bring those here with our partners in Nigeria. Hmm. What was your, what, what's your mission? How do you go about achieving your mission? Yes, well, our mission at the end of the day is always to improve the ability of someone to have their lives saved. And how we go about that is by going into um, where, wherever country we're working and making sure we have partners on the ground there who can go ahead and come just build a coalition with us. We really view our organization not as something um, of bringing first aid only or some type of program that we own. We view this as a coalition where we can help individuals in whichever country we operate in with local partners on the ground. Hmm. Now, at the top of the show, I gave those stats about first responders, right? Talk us a bit about that Zachary about um, proper first response and why it makes such a huge difference absolutely so we know that that injury is one of the leading causes of death in the entire world and heart attacks and cardiac uh, incidents are also one of the leading causes of death and we know that both of those things can actually be prevented with emergency medicines. actually the, the World Health Organization published a study a few years ago that showed that up to about 50% of all deaths due to injury can be prevented with proper emergency medical services. But the problem is that most people don't have access to emergency medical services. Or if they do, it takes far too long for an ambulance to reach them. And that by that point, they've already been seriously injured or died. And so because of that, teaching first aid, training first responders can close that gap and can save lives for all of those people who would have otherwise died. Hmm. Now, this might seem like a bit of a silly question, um, but it needs to be asked, right? Why is professional training needed for this? I ask because um, there are lots of people listening right now who feel like they know what to do. You know, um, they they don't they don't need any training. They've watched Rescue uh, 911. They've watched uh, Baywatch for years. They've watched Grey's Anatomy. I'm pointing at myself. So I love that show. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. I've watched all 18 seasons. <laughs> I stopped watching at uh, season 14 because I was like, I'm tired of the death. Like, <laughs> come on, man. You know, so, so, I mean, why do I need special training? No, of course. You know, at, at, like, when, when you see someone on the ground, let's say, and they're in an accident, Right. Our first intuition, just as human beings, is to go ahead and help them. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the but the number one thing for us that's important to remember is that we have to be skilled in how to help them before we make the situation worse or just don't provide any help at all. Mm. So the importance of really being, um, you know, just understanding that you need to get trained in order to help that situation comes in the sense that there's really um, like four or five different situations that re we really go over in our trainings mm. that are the majority of what we can kind of provide mm -hmm. um, when it comes to first aid care. And not only that, but once you do get trained, um, and especially if you get trained through a coalition 
that um, we've started to build here, for example, bringing in government partners or local organizations on the ground, you have a, a sort of legitimacy in your community to make that difference and to be empowered to train people. Mm. We really focus on that as, as an organization. Our number one goal is to empower lay first responders, right? To make sure they have all the tools that they need. So training is one of those tools and one of the most important ones at that. So Pascal, how does this work in a country like Nigeria where first responders are not really a thing? We don't have paramedics, for instance, or not a lot of paramedics, for instance. We also don't have a first responders culture per se. Uh, we typically get to the scene and start pouring water or fanning people, you know. So like, uh, take pictures. Or take pictures. So how does that work here? Because you are on the ground. How does it work here? Yeah, prior to the collaboration with LFR, back in 2018, hmm. we got this... Uh, need assessment report from FRSC and Lasambos who have been partners with us on post scratch care up until 2018. Hmm. Uh, they they share the feedback that many deaths happen before their personnel get to the scene of crashes because hmm. most Nigerians do not know what to do or uh, some are scared about harassment by law by enforcement the police. agencies. Mm-hmm. So what we did with this we designed a collab a program with them and uh, source for fun so many corporate organizations mm-hmm. locally or, uh, and many others mm. funded our we started this training in 2018 2019 mm-hmm. and we saw that many from law enforcement agents that even though they were saddled with the responsibility of handling rescue mm-hmm. most of them didn't have the skill because mm-hmm. they've not been trained mm-hmm. so we trained from last mile vio police uh, road safety and over time expanded to even uh, people like uh, vulcanizers, filling station attendants, to even operators, secondary school students. Mm. So t- the, until we began the partnership with LFR mm-hmm. uh, up, uh, early d- this year, mm-hmm. we had trained close to 700 people. Describe, they, 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 describe what the training looks like to me. So the, the, it covers cardiopulmonary skills required to handle CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. As now my grandmother is listening and she doesn't know what okay, CPR so is. Heart, uh, so when somebody has heart attack, mm-hmm. and we have had about personalities and people of different kinds who have a heart attack or mm-hmm. cardiac arrest, mm-hmm. so the typical re- impo- impulsive response is to pour water. Mm. But through this training, including this uh, uh, semi-literate people train, mm-hmm. many of them have learned how to give uh, uh, compression, uh, um, give uh, CPR. I mean, uh, by the time you do 30 and you know who to call, 767122 mm-hmm. or 112. Mm-hmm. So that interval, uh, mm-hmm. knowing how which agency you need to call while mm-hmm. you're offering that, mm-hmm. uh, gives a lot, increases the chances, the of, chances survival. of the person's because survival. Because 20 minutes most times is the uh, grace period if mm-hmm. somebody has a heart attack. Mm-hmm. But again, the co- other important side is changing the culture from taking pictures to doing something positive for about the victim. it yeah. now now let's not get ahead of ourselves you know we, we've three of us four of us in this studio have said trainings multiple times right but i want to paint a picture for those who are listening and i want to show those who are watching what you mean when you say training what does this training look like so you say compressions what does that mean you say cpr what does that mean like as descri- as descriptive as possible Pascal. So what it means is that uh, if somebody has... If somebody slumps now. Slumps. Mm-hmm. So you, first of all, check the environment. Is it safe Okay. for you? Then you there's what we call Dr. ABC. So, you, so before we get uh, to Dr. ABC, what do you mean is the environment safe for me? Yeah, because somebody may... If somebody collapses and the place, the scene, mm. you, because you must, as a lifesaver, mm-hmm. you must be careful to keep yourself safe as well so as well okay so in the environment you must dimension it is safe okay and then you ask do you need help okay so you must be clear to scream it not do it in the in a hidden place make i help you yeah okay make a hand Mm -hmm. make i help you Mm. help you need help Mm -hmm. so someone if the person is able to speak Mm. then you proceed Mm. And they pr- uh, there is a way you position your hands okay. if you want, because you must check whether the person is breathing. Okay. Or not. How do you check if the person is breathing? There is what is called Dr. ABC. You check the A wave, oh. they check whether uh, from the nose tree. Mm-hmm. And so, like, put a, pull it, put your finger under their nose to see if air is coming out. Yes. Okay. And then you put your hand under their neck, neck to yes. see if you can feel a pulse. The pulse, yes. Okay. Yes. Then what? Then you, by the time you've established that, mm. so you. You get to a section of the chest. Okay. 
there's you do some, Lagos, if you're watching, you can see where he's pointing. I'm actually seeing yes, it on my so, screen myself. So you go and do something like a cross sign. Okay. So he helps you to establish exactly mm -hmm. here. Oh, close. he's doing it yes. on on on, yes. on Zachary. Absolutely. Okay, great. So Lagos, you can watch live. Please move with your mic then so that so that we can keep hearing you. you Pascal, move with your mic so we can keep hearing you. Great. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, good. So you place your hands mm -hmm. and uh, it, by the, uh, your pr your use the this part part of your chin mm -hmm. uh, to uh, the, this part of your uh, hand uh -huh. then as you press uh, one two and uh, touch on his chest now okay <laughs> <laughs> you got it Pasco come on <laughs> one two three, three four then you look for someone around cause one one two mm -hmm. call one two two call mm -hmm. seven six seven mm -hmm. and you describe oh so 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 person collapse in this so mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. so they those one one two one six mm -hmm. uh, seven six seven mm -hmm. Is describing is that the, the paramedics, call, the yes. paramedics, yes, who are because coming. you're not a doctor. That's right. You're not meant to go beyond providing this immediate uh, aid. Yeah. So those the paramedics are heading to the who place. Who are coming? Mm -hmm. So uh, as you're offering, you do the first start compression. So do it again. Do the cross again, because now the cameras are on both of you, and I want Lagos to see to to know what exactly you're talking about, right? One, two, two three, three four, four, five, six, seven. But because it's going to be lying down, mm -hmm. so you you can it, you you use your weight. Do yeah. you use your weight to do it? Is it, it possible to break their bone while you're doing no, it? No, no, no. Oh, no, they can't. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah. they're, they're saying yes. Zachary is saying yes. Yeah. So sometimes you act. You might actually hear this the bone in their chest here break, and that's actually oh. that's actually not a bad thing. So oh. if if somebody is not breathing and they don't have a pulse, mm -hmm. and you're putting all of your weight on them, which you should, right? Mm -hmm. You should be putting all of all your weight, weight on them. All your weight on them. Okay. Um, and you're you're doing 30, 30 of these compressions. So you're supposed to do this one two, two three, three four five six, six seven exactly. until you count to 30 and count to 30 and mm -hmm. then what you can do is you give them two rescue breaths so okay you take a deep breath in mm -hmm. you put your mouth on their mouth mm -hmm. and you blow air into their mouth i see but what you might hear if you're pressing hard is you might hear their ribs crack okay and that all that means mm -hmm. is that you're putting enough pressure here that it can compress their heart and force their heart to start beating force it to start beating exactly because okay. okay. what's happened if somebody's in a cardiac arrest mm -hmm. is their heart stops beating mm -hmm. and so yes their ribs will be broken and mm -hmm. that will hurt mm -hmm. and, and they will have to heal from that mm -hmm. but it's far more important that we're able to compress Get their the heart, heart mm -hmm. and having their ribs stay okay okay so you know yeah grace anatomy i knew that <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, i just wanted to add on that note and this kind of goes back to your original question right why do, if i see someone at the scene can i just not respond i've watched shows i've mm -hmm. i think i know how to do cpr why can't i do it mm. um and it really goes back to your other question of can the ribs crack from that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, as individuals, we just don't want to make the scene worse. We mm -hmm. want to help. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something about our training mm -hmm. that we've really tried to outline in there mm -hmm. is to really go ahead and make a priority list and teach it from that list, mm -hmm. right? So we mentioned Dr. ABC. Mm -hmm. um, just really quickly what that stands for is mm -hmm. danger response and then move forward, airway, breathing, and circulation. Mm -hmm. That is what we want people to take away from is always the first thing to check. Okay. Airway, breathing, and circulation. And CPR, for example, is one of those things where we have to make sure that your circulation is actually working effectively. So if your circulation is working effectively, that's way more important than even potentially breaking a rib. And mm. those are the types of basics in first aid, especially in our level one training mm. that we really try to emphasize. When you go to a scene, what are the most important things we can respond to mm -hmm. until we go ahead and get more help over there? And it's also just been so phenomenal to see how much our partners have gone ahead and really just been so integral to this program and mm -hmm. how much they've improved their response times for mm -hmm. example so mm -hmm. we were just with the federal road safety corps a little bit earlier today mm -hmm. and um the sector commander of lego state had mentioned that they got their response times from 15 minutes down to five wow so it's it's a huge decrease in their response time so mm -hmm. if we can really go ahead and train our first responders mm -hmm. at a level one level where they can just make sure the victim is not getting worse and mm -hmm. as stabilized as possible, possible until more help comes hospital. in yeah. it'll make a huge difference in these, pe in these people's lives legos you just heard the voice of the outreach director at lfr international National Ashwin Kulkani, they're here talking to us about what to do when you are the first responder. Do you know CPR? Do you know first aid? Before him, you heard the voice of the co-founder and operations director at LFR International, Zachary Eisner. And also in the studio is the executive director of Health Emergency Initiative Nigeria, HEI, Pascal Achunine. He was the one who was um, teaching us how to do the compressions. He didn't do the mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, though, but I don't think we... <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I don't think we quite need that. If you've got questions, go ahead and give us a call and ask 0700993993993. 0700993993993. I'm glad that many of you are live right now watching our guests in the studio as they take you through uh, a practical of what this is supposed to look like. Now, um, let's talk about this um, training that you're conducting in Lagos. I think I'm going to come to the outreach officer with that question, right? Because that's more your domain. It's um, definitely both of ours. Feel free to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Still well, yeah, let me ask you, Ashwin. Um, so, um, tell us about the training that you're uh, conducting in Lagos for um, commercial drivers and other key workers. Talk to me about that. Of course, of course. Um, you know, this is the first pilot study of what we're hoping will be a much larger program in Nigeria. Hmm. Um, this all started last year when uh, Mr. Pascal over here had reached out to us um, so kindly over email. And it's really led to this program that we've been just so happy has been kicked off the ground. Hmm. What we're doing um, in Lagos right now, what we just completed um, yesterday, actually, was a pilot study of 350 first responders mm. who were trained over 10 sessions. Mm -hmm. um, and most importantly, um, the trainers themselves were um, from Nigeria. So those would be Federal Road Safety Corps officers. They might be members of the police force, other local contacts that HEI is on the ground, for mm. example, um, who would go ahead and help train these, uh, these individuals. Um, what's also really important about these trainings is the fact that these are people who will be on the road mm -hmm. at, um, like throughout the day. So those will be commercial drivers. They might be delivery drivers. They might be taxi cab drivers, for example. So the chances of them seeing trauma and seeing accidents Quite are high. much higher. Yeah. So it's very important for us that, for example, if you're sitting in a studio or sitting in a room, we can train you, but it's not going to be much help. Yeah. So we really wanted to make sure we got to that target scene. Yeah. Um, and then through those trainings, um, we provided the level one basic trauma care. It's around a five hour course, um, which LFR has also provided in around six other countries at this point. Okay. Um, to to um, at least those programs have shown some really good success. And even just through the trainings that we've done initially, we've seen wonderful knowledge acquisition scores um, just from the before training to after in terms of those basic things we were talking about, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Such as bleeding control, or there's a broken bone. How do you go ahead and address that? Mm -hmm. So those basic first aid um, steps, we've seen a pretty good response so far in that. Mm. Zachary, is there an ideal number of first responders in a society? Uh, what percentage of the population should be trained? Is it okay if I say everybody? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. I mean, I, ideally, everyone would know. But actually, there's an answer to this question. Mm. Um, the uh, the disease control priorities, which is uh, a document that's released by experts from around the world every few years, recommends that for first responder training, we train between 0.5 and 1% of of any given population mm. in order to provide sufficient care. Mm. And so what that would look like for us here is, for example, for a town or a community of 100,000 people, mm. we would then want to train 1,000 first responders. Mm. Um, and, and so, you know, we can take that and extrapolate it out to all of Nigeria. And, and we've actually done that. And, and something that's really interesting based on those numbers is how little it would actually cost to provide emergency medical services to every single Nigerian. How and little would it cost? 26 million U.S. dollars. Oh, that's, so that's a lot of money for us. It's a lot of money. <laughs> but... Compared to the gross national product of Nigeria, mm -hmm. or the gross national product of any nation in the area, mm -hmm. it's actually just a small fraction, yeah. right? And, and you know, over time, right, that's, that's not just something that will happen in one year, yeah, but that would also save millions of lives. Yeah. We've actually calculated that for every $54 or so, about 23,000 Naira, mm -hmm. we can save one year of a Nigerian's life. Oh, wow. And so when you look at it at that scale, it, it seems like a lot less money. Yeah, but it does. Yeah. When, when you calculate it out, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, that provides EMS, if we provide it for all Nigerians, mm -hmm. to 3% of all of the humans in the world. Mm. And so that is, you know, it's, it's an ambition. It's a goal. I know it's a goal that, that Mr. Pascal has and uh, uh, that he shared with us, and, and we very much agree. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, going back to my, my original answer, I would love for everyone to be trained. To be personally. trained. And, and just really quickly, if I might add, even yeah. though it seems like a big number, mm -hmm. um, we've also calculated that to train one first responder mm -hmm. every year will cost $16. Mm. Um, and most of those costs come in from the supplies, right? For example, we have vests that have the Federal Road Safety Corps logo mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that the police and any other individuals on the ground, any bystanders, understand these are trained first responders who are right. licensed. Right. Um, and then they also have their first aid kits, which, which cost a good amount. So 
the actual upfront cost, um, at least on an individual basis, we, we're trying to keep it as low as possible. It's very important for us. Mm -hmm. um, but really, we're trying to, like, we've even seen that around $16 per trainee, mm -hmm. which we're hoping um, is something that we can raise money to keep on expanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you just joined the show, hello to you. Good evening. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. This is Hard Facts or 99.3 Nigeria Info. Today, we're talking about CPR and first aid because you could be the difference between whether somebody lives or dies. And I've got three guests in the studio with me who are doing their best to ensure that everybody gets trained because Zachary says he would prefer for everyone to get <laughs> trained. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, as a first responder now zachary is the co-founder and operations director at LFR uh, International, uh, Zachary Eisner. And uh, he's here with the Outreach Director at LFR International as well, Ashwin Kokani. And they're both here with the Executive Director of Health Emergency Initiative Nigeria, HEI, Pascal Achunine. And three of them are talking about the work that they've been doing in Nigeria, alongside other countries all over the world, training first responders. They've started here. We're still talking about that. If you've got questions, send them to WhatsApp. I'm seeing all your questions already all our phone lines are ringing people have questions for you three and they'll be asking those questions when we come back from this break remember we're streaming live on facebook nigeria info 99.3 we are on youtube nigeria info fm tweet at us at nigeria info fm as well don't go away this is nigeria info 99.3 you are listening to your number one station for talk. 99.3 Nigeria Info. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. them save money or get more from their budget but sadly every day isn't christmas Aww. unless like me you've got to have the higher thermocool gen power inverter air conditioner that helps me save 70 percent on my electricity consumption i even enjoy multiple acs when i'm on gen that's less bills and more comfort every single day so what will you do with your 70 percent saving get the higher thermocool gen power inverter air conditioner that's a whopping 70% electricity saver. That's less bills, more comfort. Higher thermal, always there for you. Chairman, I bet I want to charge my phone. But wait, oh, it don't say where I see you for a coffee joint. What did they happen? My brother. I don't throw money like that again, no. I don't save all my money with Davo Danny for my future washing machine. <laughs> you mean so you don't give David money? Nah, man. No be David Now Nah, Davo Danny Microfinance Bank. When you open a save and win account with Davo Danny, you fit to win. Oh, when the price is like a brand new Okada 45-inch TV set, generator, deep freezer, and all that book. Prices to win, make you save up to 500,000 naira for nine months of a good package, 200,000 naira for seven months for silver, and 50,000 naira for five months for bronze package. Now, the Okada way must have win from Davodani Microfinance Bank with that. Are they, where they go? And they go open the Vodani safe and win account. Sharp, sharp. The promo for this year don't start. And it go finish for January 31st, 2023. See and see. Apply, shall. For motoring, visit www.davodanimfb.com. Go, 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 grains. We love our Kellogg's. Go, grains. Go, 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 grains. Love the goodness of its multi grains. Grain sets, go. With protein and creamy tasty Kellogg's. Go, grains. Grain sets, go. 
Wow. With vitamins and minerals in Kellogg's Go Grains. Great set, go! So go, 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 go! The go new Kellogg's Go Grains, available in stores grains. near you. Grains. Believe and win big. Experience the wonder of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar with Coca-Cola. Buy any Coca-Cola product with a white cap. Check the code under the cap and dial star 8014 star 1 star code hash to participate for free. You could win an all-expense pay trip to the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. There's also 250 million Naira in airtime to be won instantly. T's and C's apply. Coca-Cola, official partner of the FIFA World Cup. This promo is approved by the FCCPC. Football's biggest season is here, and DSTV is the stadium with all the action. Enjoy every single match from the FIFA World Cup, the Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, the UEFA Europa League, and the UEFA Champions League. That's all the stars from around the world in every competition that matters. Get DSTV HD Decoder Dish plus one month compact subscription now for 12,000 Naira only and be part of sports' biggest stadium only on DSTV. Season C's apply. Here is the list of excuses that will no longer be accepted. I beg, I beg, give me your hotspot. I want my data, but this one too much. Please, could you put your Wi-Fi on? I'm out of data and the recharge card seller has closed. Oh, I would have recharged though, but I can't find my wallet. <laughs> Please, I've got cramps and I can't get up. Can you share your hotspots? Oh, no. Don't know where my internet token is and I need to quickly buy data. Please, could you share your hotspot till I find it? Hey, Jumbu, I will buy data, but that recharge card seller need to ever get changed. How good one? Now, there's really no excuse to ever be out of data with Glow Borrow Me Data. Dial star 321 hash to borrow data now and pay later. I beg, I feel share your hotspot. This rain be hard. Make thunder no go fireman. <laughs> the largest data network, Glow, grandmasters of data. Are you weary of the state of our beloved country, Nigeria? Do you still believe in the efficacy of prayer to change things? If you do, please join us in raising an altar in faith and unity unto God as we pray for a new nation. The set time has come to birth a new Nigeria. Date is Saturday, 17th of September, 2022. Time, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Venue is the Tafawa Baliwa Square, TBS Lagos. Let us all come together with one voice and pray for Nigeria. Everyone is welcome. This is a non-denominational prayer meeting. The Information Communication Technology and Telecommunications Expo ICTEL 2022 is here with the team ensuring efficient digital infrastructure in Nigeria. This year's ICTEL Expo will create a platform for all stakeholders, brand executives, founders and entrepreneurs, government and trade agencies and many others engage in robust discussions on improving the government's plans towards growing the digital economy by 2025. Key Event highlights include exhibition, product unveil, conferences and seminar presentations, panel sessions, and lots more. Date August 31st to September 1st, 2022. Time 9 a.m. daily. Venue the Muslim Center, Lagos, Nigeria. For more information on exhibition and sponsorship, call 0806. 921-7414 or 0802-932-6610 or log on to our website www.icetelexpo.ng my customer, I beg you the golden penny 400 grams midi pack. Now spaghetti my children won't chop this night. Madam Sabinus, which one be 400 gram midi pack? Introducing Golden Penny Pasta new 400 gram midi pack with same quality. Golden Penny Pasta. Enjoy it your way. Big mommy, add that bokoto we go senior school. Put two roundabout. Anoint the package with that slim thick shaki and uh, Uncle, eh? no vexo. Which teeth you won't use it all this or rishi rishi? Hm. That your teeth will be like we have moto jam truck. You know they worry you again. That one not before before. All thanks to the new close-up complete fresh protection. That's right. The new close-up complete fresh protection toothpaste gives you complete oral protection with fluoride and antibacterial zinc to keep your teeth strong, prevent tooth holes and fight bacteria. Please have to go buy my own new close-up complete fresh protection toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> close-up complete fresh protection for your important oral care needs. Available in a blue gel. Believe and win big. Experience the wonder of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar with Coca-Cola. Buy any Coca-Cola product with a white cap. Check the code under the cap and dial star 8014 star 1 star code hash to participate for free. You could win an all-expense pay trip to the FIFA World Cup in
in Qatar. There's also 250 million Naira in airtime to be won instantly. T's and C's apply. Coca-Cola, official partner of the FIFA World Cup. This promo is approved by the FCCPC. Guy, what's going on? You know my dilemma with my phone now. <laughs> you call that one phone. Eh, so why are you so happy? I got tired of hiding the phone. So I went to the Samsung store to see what I can afford. Uh -huh. Samsung has a plan called Flex Pay that allows you to pay as low as 3,000 Naira for any Samsung device of your choice and complete payment over a period of 3 to 12 months. I sharply picked a 6 month payment plan and I got a Galaxy A23. This is a machine. As man. You have been dulling yourself, oh? Find Samsung Flex Pay and own your device right away without breaking your pocket. Terms and conditions apply. Hurry now while stock lasts. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We are back. We're back on 99.3 Nigeria Info. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Good evening, Lagos. How's it going? Do you know CPR and first aid? I'm asking that question because um, I shared with you before the break that it was very important for you to know this stuff. You could be the difference between whether somebody lives or dies. When you get to the scene of an accident or the scene of an emergency, what do do you do? I shared data with you that was published in the Public uh, Library of Science that says that a heart attack victim is 57% more likely to survive if the first responder is trained. The first responder is the person that gets to the scene of the incident first. If the first responder is not trained, the survival odds are 24%. If they are trained, the odds go up to 37.9%. So literally, you could decide whether a person, you know, one of the deciders at least, let me not put too much pressure on you. <laughs> I've, g I've got guests in the studio with me who have made it their mission to train as many first responders as possible um, all over different countries in the world. Uh, one of them is the co-founder uh, and operations director at LFR International, Zachary Eisner. Uh, the second one is the outreach director at LFR International, Ashton Kokani. And the third guest is the executive director of Health Emergency Initiative Nigeria, HEI, Pascal Achunine. And they're here talking to us about the work that they do at LFR International. LFR is an, is an NGO. They're based in Michigan. That's in the U.S. And they give first responder training to lay people. Lay people are you and I. And so we're going to get a bit more training just before the show is over. I recommend that you watch. Our live stream is Nigeria Info 99.3. Uh, that's on Facebook. YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. We've got so many questions to get through and I'll get to them in a bit. Uh, the number to call if you have questions, 07 Nine zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three. Now you showed us a brief demonstration about how to do CPR um, before the break, but there are people who just tuned in now because they just got in the car, they're on their way home, and there are people who are on the bus now on their way home and they're watching via their phones. So could you do like a refresher course for us? So you get on the scene and you know somebody um, has just had a heart attack. They've just slumped. You know they've just passed out. Um, uh, Okay, well, we have Zachary. Uh, Zachary is uh, pretending to have passed out in his chair. If you're watching live, you can see this for yourself. Zachary has passed out. Uh, Pascal was telling us about Dr. ABC. Am I right? Yes. Dr. ABC. So Zachary was telling us about Dr. ABC. So how do we put Dr. ABC into motion? Zachary? Absolutely. So for the first thing of Dr. ABC is the D, right? And that stands for danger. So the first thing that I would do as a first responder in this situation mm -hmm. is I see Ashwin there. I see, oh my goodness, something might be happening to him. I have to intervene here, right? Mm -hmm. And so before I go up to him, I'm going to make sure there's no danger. I'll make sure the scene is safe for me mm -hmm. and I'll make sure it's safe for other people. And if there is any danger as a first responder, I can use bystanders. I can use people around and mm -hmm. I can say, hey, please help, help. And we can control any danger that's around. Exactly. Okay. I love that Ashwin is committing to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so D, danger. D. You make sure there's no danger. Then R? R. R stands for response. Okay. And so generally what we say is we need to get permission for somebody so we can help them. So I'll ask, sir, hello, are you okay? Mm. Now in this case, he's passed out. Mm -hmm. He's had a heart attack, right? Mm -hmm. And and so we can't get his response. We right. can't get permission to help him. And so what we say then is it's called implied consent. Okay. And what that means is it's assumed that if it were you in mm. that situation, if you had passed out, mm -hmm. you would want somebody to help, to help you. you right. So even though he can't 
can't give me his consent to touch him and help him. Right. It's assumed that if I can save his life, he would want that. Right. Right. So I've gotten that that step now response. I'm not getting a response for him, mm-hmm. but I know because of that that I can go help. Okay. So now what I need to do is airway, breathing, and circulation. A, B, C. Okay. So the first thing that I do is I take my hand mm-hmm. and I can place it right below his nose or his mouth just like this. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Lagos, I hope you're watching. You can watch again on Nigeria Info 99.3 for Facebook, YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. So you put your hand under his nose to check if he's breathing. Exactly. You and can if move I... with the mic, you know, just oh, move it a bit closer to you. Ah, great. Uh-huh. I can okay. put my hand under his mouth just like this. Mm-hmm. If I can't feel anything there or perhaps there's blood somewhere, I want to make sure that I have gloves on. Or okay. if I don't have gloves, mm-hmm. I can use like a nylon bag. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I, I want to do that and make sure I'm, I'm safe. And mm-hmm. if I can't feel through the gloves, I can also put my hand on his chest. Okay, to and see we could if it's rising. Feel it rising and, and falling. falling. Exactly. Okay, okay. So let's say in this pretend situation, I don't feel any breathing. I don't see any breathing. Mm-hmm. So it's clear here mm-hmm. that either his airway is obstructed, okay. right? He can't get air in, okay. or his heart's not pumping. Okay. So I want to check and make sure his airway is open first. Okay. Because if his airway is not open, then mm-hmm. it doesn't matter, right? So really quickly, what I can do mm-hmm. is I can lift his chin and open his airway. Okay. Okay, once that's open, I check his pulse. That's how, how, do you, how do you open his airway through lifting his chin? It's you open his question. mouth? Yes, so you open the mouth and you can take two fingers mm-hmm. and one hand. And mm-hmm. what I'll do is just like this. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. And you lift the chin up, uh-huh. and that actually it removes the tongue from the back of his throat. I because see. Because sometimes what can happen is when you pass out, mm-hmm. uh, your tongue can fall and obstruct your throat. Interesting. If you go like this, you can you can feel it's a little bit harder to breathe. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's actually <laughs> because your tongue is, is obstructing your throat there. Yeah. It's in the way. Okay. Uh, so what I've done there is I've removed his tongue. And so now any intervention that I do, it will be helpful because he has a clear airway. Okay. Now I know he's not breathing. So I need to then check his pulse. Okay. So I'll take two fingers here mm-hmm. and make sure we're not using our thumb. Okay. The problem with using your thumb is you actually feel your own pulse. Oh. So if I were to use my thumb on him, let's say he doesn't have a pulse. Mm-hmm. If I use my thumb, I say, oh, oh okay, there's, there's a, pulse. a pulse. Oh, he's good, right? <laughs> and I say, okay, well, I don't need to do CPR then because okay. he has a pulse. Yeah. Great. If I use these two fingers here mm-hmm. and I place just below his chin bone on his neck. Right. And I press firmly. Right. And you can feel if there's a pulse there. Okay. So in this situation, let's say I don't feel a pulse. Right. Okay, well then, that's when we need to begin CPR. CPR, but if you do feel a pulse, then what? If you do feel a pulse and you've opened the airway, Mm -hmm. what you want to do is you can put somebody in a position that's called the recovery position. What is that? So the recovery position... Generally, what it is, is it's just lying on their side. Okay. And you can use their arm and their leg to mm-hmm. help support them on their side. Okay. Uh, and if you if people are looking for resources on the recovery position, you can easily, you can look it up on Google. Or if you want to go to our website for first aid materials, mm-hmm. uh, we have details on the recovery position so, there. So lie on their side, like the way you lie on your side when you're sleeping. Exactly. So like, like a baby. Exactly. Uh. Uh, and that will make sure that nothing, uh, if he were to vomit or mm-hmm. there were to be saliva or blood in his throat that it wouldn't go into his lungs and oh. cause him to choke oh. yeah so okay so but that's only if you feel air coming out of his yes, nose that's only if he's and you breathing. feel a fall uh, a pulse exactly then you don't feel both things what next compression yes uh so then you if you, f- you don't feel a pulse you begin compressions and actually you you're not sleeping right because <laughs> <laughs> he's so committed <laughs> I'm, I'm not breathing. I don't have a pulse. Oh, sorry, sorry. Know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, go back, go back. All right, go ahead. Uh, so, so just like what um, Mr. Pascal said earlier, you'll take yeah. one hand, mm-hmm. you'll take another hand, and you'll place it on top, and you interlock I hope you're fingers. watching Lagos, Nigeria Info 99.3 on Facebook, Nigeria Info FM on YouTube. Go ahead. You interlock your fingers just like this. Right. And then what you do is you want to go and you lean over the person. Presumably, they're lying on the floor. Floor, okay. Uh, but in this case, we'll do it in a chair. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to... What if they're lying in the chair? What if they pass out in the chair? Do you get they, them to lie on the floor? Yes. If they pass out in the chair, what you want to do is very, very carefully. Mm-hmm. And you can have other people help, help you, you with this move. You mm-hmm. especially want to make sure somebody's holding their head and their neck. So, so they don't hit it. So not bobbing around. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And you want to lie them down flat on the floor. Okay. Uh, because this only works if we can put the most pressure possible. Mm, okay. So I take these hands here and I feel where his sternum is, that bone sternum, on your chest. Sternum, that's too much. 
English. That's yes. like, you know, we're not medical students. Absolutely. So what's that? That's the bone in your chest in between your ribs. Okay. So right in the middle of your chest. How do you, you feel, feel that for women who have breasts? How yes. do we feel that? That would be the bone that's right in between the, the breasts. breasts. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And you take your hands like this and you put it there. Okay. And then you press. And you press down 30 Times, times just like that it has to be 30 uh generally unless there's another person that mm. can be providing breaths while you're doing that yeah we say 30 times okay and how do you count out the 30 is it one two three four is it one two how do you count it out so we generally say 100 beats per minute and the best way to remember that is if everybody knows the song staying alive that goes ha 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 ha, ha staying alive staying exactly. alive that's the I saw for each, huh? Ha, oh ha, my God, that's ha, a lot. That's ha. that's really hard. Yes, yes, and you want to be doing it as hard as you can. They actually say when you're in um, in medical school or, or paramedic school, you want to compress mm. the chest mm. up to one third of the entire height of the chest. Ooh. So you're really, really, you're really pressing, pressing down. Pressing down. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So you keep doing that, and somebody that. who is around has to call the emergency numbers. Exactly. You have. And somebody. the emergency numbers are seven six seven. One one two. Okay, speak into the mic so we can all hear you. Seven six seven one one two and one two two. Okay, seven six seven one one two and uh, one, one two two. two. Yes. So while you're doing ha 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 ha, staying alive, call the police. Ha 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 ha, staying alive, and somebody's calling one one two seven six seven and uh, one two two and one two two. Okay, what if the person is bleeding? How do I stop the bleeding? That's a great question, and, and this is actually one of the most common things that we see. We've seen in, in our programs in other areas, up to 70% of mm. our first responders mm -hmm. use their skills to treat bleeding. Mm. So what we generally say is there's two things you want to do. The mm -hmm. first thing is simple. Mm. It's just to use something that's clean mm -hmm. to okay. provide pressure and elevation. Okay. But again, here we're going to remember our doctor ABC, mm. right? Before I do anything, I'm going to make sure the scene is safe. Mm -hmm. Because there's blood here, I need to put on gloves. So you're not infected. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have those, you can use a plastic bag, a nylon, anything mm -hmm. you have to protect yourself. Okay. Uh, after that, uh, we've checked airway, breathing, circulation. They have a pulse, right? Or we can ask, hello, sir, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in that situation, I might go, oh, oh, help me, help me. I'm so, bleeding. Uh, I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. I'm sorry. I already woke up when I heard Zach. <laughs> <speaking, so. laughs> so I'm already safe. No CPR needed. But now we moved on to bleeding. Right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. in that case, if the person is yelling mm -hmm. or they're screaming, that is good news in two cases. Mm. We know that their airway mm -hmm. is open. Their so airway they is Exactly. Yeah, and then they're, also, you know. they're also breathing because mm -hmm. they're speaking at you. Mm -hmm. However, we don't know that their circulation is completely intact mm -hmm. if they're bleeding um, outside of, um, uh, if they're bleeding uncontrollably, right? We mm -hmm. need to make sure they don't lose so much, Too blood, much blood so that they can still have a circulation. Right. So how do you stop the bleeding? You, you, you pr protect yourself first yes, protect by yourself. wearing a glove or wearing a, a toilet paper. Absolutely. Then find something clean. Yes, you find something clean. And what Ashwin is taking his shirt off. I love I'm today's right show. Now, <laughs> especially when Ashwin does. Uh, I'm going to uh, do a demonstration right now using just materials that you would find every day. Uh, clothes. This we can, you know, substitute what I'm wearing for anything else that somebody else is wearing. But okay. I'm gonna take off now, my... now Zachary's taking his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm gonna take off my suit jacket here, and I'm actually gonna use this. Okay. Uh, and what I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna fold it up. And I'm going to say, okay, with this, mm. I'm going to provide pressure. Okay. Pushing firmly. Okay. And I'm going to elevate okay. the limb that's bleeding. Oh, and so let's say it's, it's his arm bleeding. Yes, exactly. You do that. Yes. If it's his leg bleeding. Same thing. I can do pressure. <laughs> now we're lifting Ashwin's it. leg. <laughs> I love today's show. <laughs> it's really important because what, it, you know, gravity, we're, we're using gravity to help us mm. if it's high up mm -hmm. it, it takes more work for the blood to leave the body right mm. and so pressure is is blocking the blood leaving the body mm -hmm. and elevation is using gravity to fight the blood leaving the body mm. so if it's in the stomach what do you do so in the stomach in that case it's just pressure we keep applying direct pressure okay. we want to make sure that we apply pressure there and we can wrap bandages around the stomach mm -hmm. to keep the pressure there what if someone stabbed them what do you do do you pull the knife out and then put the pressure on 
That's a great question. So that's the number one thing we don't want to do. If somebody's been stabbed or there's anything that is breaking piercing through, piercing, impaling, anything like that, mm. we want to make sure that we don't remove it because it's actually doing our job for us, oh. right? If he's stabbed here, he might be bleeding a little bit around there, mm -hmm. but the thing that stabbed him mm -hmm. is actually blocking the blood, the blood from, from coming out. <laughs> if I pull this out, he's going to bleed out very fast. Yeah. And so what I want to do is just maintain its position so i can use anything that i have with me okay and i can tie it around mm -hmm. so tie it around the thing so he's using his tie for those who are not able to watch on facebook uh um ashwin raise your hand a bit more so the camera can catch it properly yes. awesome uh, and just making sure that that object doesn't move mm. now there are some scenarios where somebody's been stabbed or say somebody's been shot or, or there's been a limb amputation mm -hmm. where this won't be enough okay, right okay uh, you know say we try this we keep doing pressure elevation pressure elevation mm -hmm. and it's not working mm -hmm. and we think that somebody might die mm -hmm. if we don't do something more serious yeah well then we can do something that's called tying a tourniquet okay and this is a little bit more dangerous okay and we only recommend that this is done if it's clear that somebody is really going to die without this intervention okay because it could be very very painful oh but it can also very much save someone's life okay so what and i'm going just really quickly please. you know in that situation right i think we're going right back into why the training is it's so very important, important you know yes. what do we need to focus on yeah of course the tourniquet uh, one thing zach will of course talk about is we want to tie it as tight as possible so mm. that blood flow stops so that yeah. means if i'm bleeding on my arm let's say in the middle of my arm where my elbow is mm -hmm. that means i'm going to get no blood flow to the all the way to hand. my hand and that's dangerous and that's dangerous your hand could go dead exactly exactly, mm. exactly. But as of course, you'd rather have your hand go dead than die and bleed out yourself. Uh. So those are the types of things in first responder training mm -hmm. where we can start to really prioritize mm -hmm. what exactly we want our responders to do in mm -hmm. the next situation. Woo! I feel like I just got a crash course. Lagos, <laughs> how you feeling? How you feeling? Let's talk. Zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three. I feel like there's more you want to talk about. Uh, just the t the tourniquet tying, if we want. I I think let's leave that be All right. because people could panic. Absolutely. You know. And, they, and they'll be like, oh, no, he could die. He's bleeding so much. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we're lay people and we don't know when, like, you know, bleeding is just normal bleeding and it's too much bleeding. Yes. And I don't want us to start losing limbs just yet. Absolutely. So <laughs> the only thing I want to remind people is that if that is that if someone is unconscious, please don't start singing at them. They will, <laughs> they will not wake up. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. I will also add, though, you know, it, it takes about about three or four hours after you tie a tourniquet for a limb to be seriously injured. So, mm. uh, you know, while it, it, it is dangerous in that respect, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not like you'll tie it and then the limb and dies. And then the limb yes. dies. Oh, yeah. great. Uh, That's a great clarification. The back from mm. the 350 trend is that mm. even this person's truck drivers, mm -hmm. to bank, mm -hmm. taxi drivers, mm -hmm. trained in three weeks, mm -hmm. we are able to demonstrate higher proficiency about 79% vis-a-vis mm. -vis 34% when the training started. Oh. So they came in, they, mm -hmm. we had administer some questionnaire mm -hmm. or some basic uh, topics mm -hmm. uh, they scored most the average was 34 percent mm -hmm. after six hours of the training mm -hmm. they accelerated to 79 percent and they said that nigeria had the best record among yes the now countries. we start with book now <laughs> <laughs> that, that shows that it's not only for the elite it's yeah everybody. it's everybody who needs this all right here's what we're gonna do we we, we have to take a break because the news is coming up at six o'clock but i've got 15 minutes before 6 30 between 6 15 and 6 30 that we can keep talking so that we can take questions from lagos they've been calling non-stop and if, if they don't talk to you guys and ask you questions they're going to have my head um <laughs> <laughs> I have so many messages on face on on WhatsApp as well, and I'd love for you guys to address all of those questions. So if it's not too much to ask, ask six fifteen. We're back here, and we're talking again about some of these things that we've just discussed. I won't ask any further questions. I'll just let Lagos do all the asking. Is that okay? Of course. Absolutely, Lagos. Of course. We've got Zachary here. We've got um, Ashwin here. We've got Pascal here, and they're teaching you about CPR, about first aid, about what to do if you are the first person to see somebody in an emergency so whether they've been in an accident or they've been shot by SARS or they've been shot by police or they have just slumped in the house while they were McQueen or they were any number of things what do you do these are the questions that uh, the gentlemen in the studio are answering for me this evening I am Sandra Ezekwesli your host we're streaming live on Facebook Nigeria Info 99.3 YouTube Nigeria Info FM I'm on social media as S Ezekwesli let's take that break we'll be right back 
99.3 Nigeria Info. We'll be right back. Believe.
31st position in the world in the August FIFA ranking. According to the ranking table, the Jose Pacheco keeper players are still placed fourth behind Senegal, Morocco, and Tunisia in Africa. 58 international fixtures were played in the men's game, mostly in Africa and Asia. Hence, changes in the August edition of the FIFA World Rankings are few and far between. Two countries, Mauritania and Botswana, are jointly the two most improved sides in terms of places. In the top 50, almost nothing has changed from the previous edition. Brazil is number one, followed by Belgium, and Argentina returns as number three. Nigeria Info, your number one for news. Always spot on, fresh and direct. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. Well, that's the news this hour. Before we go, let's take another look at the major stories we brought you where. You heard that 55, uh, 57 terrorists were killed in the northeast in two weeks, while Calm has returned to the Lagos Badagri Expressway after youth clash earlier. And then you heard the federal government has received the draft white paper on a Rossonia report. The Russian rocket strike on Ukraine railway station killed 25 people. <laughs> and that was the news edited by Aroro Obo. Thank you for listening. Remember, for more news stories, you can visit our website www.nigeriainfo.fm. You can also listen to Nigeria Info wherever you are. Just follow the Nigeria Info app from your play store. If you have information for our newsroom, a story you'd like us to cover, uh, call us on 01465-7175. Again, 01465-7175. Follow us on social media, YouTube, Nigeria Info FM, Twitter, and Nigeria Info FM, Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, and Instagram, and Nigeria Info FM. We love that. I am Ivana Kasto. This is 99.3 Nigeria Info. See you at 7. As promised, here we are. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, and if you just tuned in, you missed uh, 40 minutes worth of conversation about CPR and first aid. And I have the best guests. I have uh, Zachary, I have Ashwina, I have um, uh, Pascal here with me, and three of them uh, have a mission, and their mission is to train as many first responders as possible. First responders are people who get to the scene of an emergency first. Now, I've got a question here uh, from Ruth Pillar. It's not a question, really. It's just a comment. Ruth Pillar says, I've taken several courses in first aid, 
having been a member of Red Cross in secondary school. But the truth is, one never really prepares. Uh, one is never really prepared when you are faced with a live emergency situation. One can freeze, not even know what to do. It can really zap one's energy physically and emotionally. Zachary and Ashwin are both nodding. So what do you do? You get into that uh, fight or flight uh, situation and your instinct is to flight or freeze um, how do you get yourself you know back into the moment and spring into action Zachary so, uh, my, uh, my uncle uh, is actually uh, a doctor and, and when I started medical training he told me a joke he said Zach what is the first thing that you do in an emergency situation and I said airway breathing and circulation and he <laughs> said no he said, check your own pulse first. Oh! <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I, think that's I, like a, that. I think that's a very, very uh, valid concern that a lot of uh, first responders have. And mm. It's scary. Mm -hmm. and, and it can be even traumatizing to see things like this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important in that moment to remember that you do have the skills mm. and you do have the power to save lives. Mm -hmm. And it might not always work. Mm -hmm. And that is really sad and really unfortunate. But... Everyone that's been trained as a first responder can be proud in knowing that they are doing their best effort. Mm. And I think it's that that can help maybe push through some of that fear, some of that anxiety and mm. the, the craziness that you feel when you first get to a scene. Mm. I can also just quickly talk about our training specifically. Mm -hmm. um, just in that situation, that is why we try to make our trainings as simple as possible. Mm. So we always say the first thing when you show up to scene remember Dr. ABC. Hmm. And so that's why we try to make it simple, you know, Dr. ABC. And then immediately you're starting to remember little things from the training. Okay, mm -hmm. I need to make sure the scene is safe. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure um, that I'm keeping a six meter radius so mm -hmm. that everything is okay. Then I go into airway, breathing, and circulation. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you pick up some momentum mm -hmm. and then you can start to really respond to the scene appropriately. Someone's asking a question about children. Do, what do you do when a child is the one in the emergency? Uh, incidentally, I have a comment here from FX for Real. Uh, who says, I cannot forget how this procedure saved my first daughter on the 4th of March 2011. She fell into a container filled with water for close to 20 minutes without anybody's knowledge. The first thing I did was to make an attempt with this procedure on her. She came back to uh, life after some pressing of the chest and mouth-to-mouth -mouth, uh, procedure. We later took her to the hospital and she's in SS1 now, to God be the glory. <laughs> so what do you do when it's a child how do you handle the situation when it's a child ashwin yeah i mean so in that situation you know first of all we're just so happy to hear of that story and to hear that her daughter is okay mm -hmm. um but in that situation we try to once again make sure that we can keep our first responders as calm as possible mm -hmm. really the situation does not change as much as people might imagine right even if it's a child we still need to make sure their airway breathing and circulation is safe before we move into for example, if they have a broken bone before hmm. moving to that hmm. and b or before we transport a victim. So it's important to remember that the basics do stay the same if it is a child. Hmm. Someone's asking, what if it's the head that is bleeding? What do you do when it's the head? Zachary? Whatever you do, please don't tie a tourniquet around somebody's neck. <laughs> <laughs> um, remember, airway is always the priority. Yeah. Uh, but if it's the head that's bleeding, it's the same thing that we would do for the body or for the, the chest, the right? Chest. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to put direct pressure on the bleeding site mm -hmm. as much as we can. We can use gauze or mm -hmm. other clean materials, mm -hmm. again, after we've made sure we're wearing uh, gloves mm -hmm. to protect ourselves or mm -hmm. a plastic bag. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we'll keep maintaining that pressure and we can tie a bandage around. Uh, and if it keeps bleeding, if it won't stop, that's when we really want to take somebody to the hospital as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, this message here says, I actually don't know, did not have your number. Please assist me with the address and contact of where the training for the CPR is taking place. I had a brief lecture on CPR. Now I need proper training. So can can just anybody uh, be trained? Is there a center where you're doing this these trainings, Pascal? Absolutely, we have um, organizations that give us their um, venue their facility at a facility at a discounted rate. Okay. Uh, for the targeted training for commercial transport Bus drivers. Mm. Uh, we so what you're doing is a pilot program. Right now, you're just focusing on this. commercial drivers. However, mm. uh, it is important that to know that is. Uh, Simultaneously, we also run training for secondary schools. I had mentioned earlier that the Commissioner for Education, Lagos mm -hmm. State, mm -hmm. approved that we train all senior secondary school students oh, here. Nice. And we are trained about 120 since the beginning of the year. So, nice. uh, we, all of that are running simultaneously. But this uh, category, yes, 
are those who effectively mm. will deploy it on day to day basis. Yes. However, the person can reach out reach us on number two Ayindegiwa Health Emergency Initiative okay. of Isro Lere. Okay. Yes. Number two where? Ayindegiwa Street. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, it, it's important that you share that information because yes. there are people who may also want you to come and train their staff. Absolutely. In their in their place we of work. We have structure that supports that. That supports that. So yes. again, the address where they can come is where? Number two. Ayindegiwa Street, Do you have a website or a number yes. that they can reach out to? Yes, 80 mm-hmm. You want to take that slower? 80 <laughs> mm-hmm. or oh. hei.org.ng. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, lots of people are asking what it takes to enroll and, and get trained. Um, lots of people, lots of people, lots of people, lots of people. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm trying uh, to. And again, I'm trying to see info at hei.ng. They can also send communication, so our back end team will respond with uh, mm. uh, proper information on the next when we are doing the next batch and how they can uh, professionally be certified. Mm. Okay, um, we've got uh, comments on Facebook. Let's try and see as many of them as we can. Ooh, the question here is, if I call the number 112, will I get a quick response? Pascal? Uh, 5 over 10, at minimum of 5 over 10. Hmm. Uh, but that's and those also, are fair odds, you know? Uh, the key, not good, not uh, great. Yeah, that's, but that's why the first responders coalition yesterday, uh, on Tuesday, we were actually with the uh, team of Honorable Commissioner for Health. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have been working with us, supporting in different ways, and the federal road safety particularly. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to see how synergy can be uh, strengthened Mm -hmm. to make sure that when those numbers are called, Mm -hmm. uh, there will be higher chances of... Higher response time. uh, Higher response time. Okay. So uh, let's talk a bit about this coalition, right? Um, So you, you, you had a big announcement. I'll come to Ashwin for that. Yes, yes. So the coalition is called the First Responder Coalition mm-hmm. of Nigeria. And right. this is actually something that's been um, very, um, we've, we've had some success with this in the past, okay. right? Um, we've done, we've had a similar coalition in Sierra Leone. Mm-hmm. Obviously, every country is different. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we'd like to do is to make sure that whatever organizations we can that are really committed mm-hmm. to overall first responder training and the ability to help build an EMS system, mm-hmm. an emergency services system in um, Lagos, and then eventually in Nigeria, would be a part of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd be happy to to, uh, to to toss it over to Zach too to see w- w- what our total goals are on that. Zach, absolutely. So the First Responder Coalition of Nigeria is this idea that we've come up with as a partnership, and and it's something that uh, I think can really serve as a beacon of hope for Nigerians who are uh, looking for these emergency services. Mm-hmm. Uh, so far, we have the Health Emergency Initiative, the Federal Road Safety Corps, and ourselves at mm-hmm. Elephant International. But we are also actively looking for other partners who are very interested in saving lives. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the key here, right? We want to leverage as many resources as we can, whether those are corporate resources, uh, you know, looking at uh, people who are looking to donate to this type of thing and, and fund this type of work, uh, or, or whether it's other NGOs who are interested in helping uh, provide these trainings mm-hmm. or roll out trainings throughout the country. Different parts of the country. Exactly. Right. And, you know, especially us as, as international uh, NGOs, you know, this is... This is Nigeria, Nigerians' home, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and this should be an initiative that is owned by Nigerians. Mm-hmm. A- and we feel that the coalition is a great way to do that and democratize that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it creates this initiative that everybody can work together on mm-hmm. because by ourselves, we can't do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, by themselves, you know, HEI has done incredible work, uh, but, you know, it, it can't do everything by itself. Right. But together, Together, we can accomplish anything that we set our minds to. Lagos, uh, I have uh, on the show with me today um, guests from LFR International. LFR is an NGO uh, based in Michigan. That's in the U.S. They give first responder training to lay people, and they're bringing that training to Lagos. They're bringing it to Nigeria. Uh, we have in the studio the co-founder and operations director at LFR International, Zachary Eisner. Uh, we also have the outreach director at LFR International, Ash 
Ashwin Kulkani. And we also have the Executive Director of Health Emergency Initiative Nigeria, Pascal Achunine. And um, three of them have done such an incredible job of uh, teaching us, like taking us through like a crash course in first aid and CPR. If you missed it, I recommend that you go and watch again on our website, NigeriaInfo.fm, Facebook Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube Nigeria Info FM. Yes, there's video demonstrations. Like they got their shirts off and everything. <laughs> 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 this will also be available on all streaming platforms uh, via our podcast. So um, if you missed the conversation, you can listen again through the podcast. Now, if you've got questions, I've taken a number of questions. Most of them are asking, how do I get uh, enrolled? How do I get the training done, etc., etc. So share that number again and share that address again um, so that uh, people can reach out to you. People can call. People can come over to the office with their questions. What's the number again, Pascal? Zero eight zero three seven two two eight eight four three. You want to call that again? Zero eight zero three seven two two eight eight four three, and then hei dot org dot ng, mm-hmm. and you can also reach us via email info at hei dot org. Ng. And then the address is number 2, two Ayinde Ayinde Giwa Street, Street Suru All right. Someone's asking on WhatsApp uh, to ensure, to make sure that they actually got um, the address right. Uh, Lagos, calling with your numbers, zero se- uh, with your questions, 0700-993-993-993. 0700-993-993-993. Ashwin, someone's asking, what's the difference between the first responder and a face uh, a first Ada. I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, of course. So um, a first responder, as you so eloquently said during the show, is the first person who can go ahead and arrive at the scene. Mm. That is what a first responder is. What the whole pro- uh, part of our program is, is training lay people to be lay first responders. Mm. So not people who are fully insured and for, um, not, not fully um, uh, employed in first response, but someone who can still show up to the scene. A first aider, if I'm not mistaken, and Zach, please do step in if I am, um, a first aider is someone who can really go ahead and show up to the scene and mm-hmm. provide effective first aid care. Mm. Those are different things, right? Okay. A first responder can be different because they might not be trained in first aid, for example. Okay. I, I think there's one key difference as well, and and this is why we say first responders instead mm-hmm. of first aiders. So like Ashwin very eloquently said, they're the first people to show up. Mm-hmm. But in addition to teaching first aid in our course, we mm-hmm. also teach transportation. Mm-hmm. And we teach how you can take somebody safely that has been injured from the scene of the incident, either to the nearest health facility or to a safe point where they can then access other emergency services. Mm-hmm. So it goes just beyond first aid skills into skills that uh, have to do with you know everything from scene safety and when you're responding to managing crowds to doing triage um, all of those other things uh, in addition to first aid skills mm. now we've got uh, people who are asking and pascal you're the best person to answer that question uh, and i love that you're doing like uh, collaborative work with the government with um, uh, road safety officials etc etc but we've got someone who's asking what's the work that is happening with the nigerian police and other security agents so that um, they don't hold the, the the first responder responsible for the accident or the incident or the emergency. So we're intentional when we are planning and deploying this program. Uh, just last week I mentioned we trained 10 police officers, uh, essentially those in the motor pool, that's uh, the traffic officers and the medical services division. And mm. that did not just come on their own. They commission, all the way from the commissioner of police who had meetings and uh, we trained the first set, but this, the current, the serving CP, took interest in this and uh, ensured that the team we are trained. And they also participated. It's interesting to know that they also were among the TOT, trained the trainer mm. that happened yesterday, some of the police officers. Okay. So issues around harassment or so in the case of assisting as a first responder, mm-hmm. that has been cleared. More so for every first responder trained by us mm-hmm. has a reflective jacket with FRS logo and our logos. Mm-hmm. So that make and a unique code. Mm-hmm. So th- that gives you some legitimacy mm-hmm. to step in without any harassment. And even for the be- 
public mm. to cooperate with you. All right, that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time today. I wish we had more time, but we don't. Zachary, Ashwin, Pascal, it's been great. We hope we have you uh, join us again on the show. I'm Sandra Ezekwesidi. This has been Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Tomorrow, we'll let Nigerian stories rest and we'll take a look at what's happening in other parts of the world. Have yourselves a fantastic night, Lagos. Good night. Thank you. And I want to assume that you would run because I want to give the listeners context for the conversation. In 2019, you were running late to um, Atiku Abubakar. What did you learn then that you will not repeat this time? Yes, when is the president coming out to address us? There's a few things. One, I have a burden and a passion for young people. The fact that you have elected a man does not mean then you begin to order him around. The president will do whatever is good for the country at any given time. Mr. Adeshino, isn't the president responsible to the people? What should the next president do to root out stakeholders who are complicit? You fire them. Those that need to be fired, are fired. It's looking like the brand new Chelsea attacking with so much fluidity. And what can you say about that, Martin? I know you follow Chelsea quite closely. I live close to the Chelsea training ground. That's what you mean by that. I'm not <laughs> <a Chelsea. laughs>